magic tea okay so this is the important topic which is uh, recommended in your syllabus also they have highlighted it magic tea or uh, very important just uh, before uh, move, moving further i'm just telling you with that this is very important one you should be expecting this for the final exam as well as internals very important okay magic tea here this is the combination of both e plain tea as well as h plain tea you see here uh, from the figure itself only you could be recognizing it so it is a combination of both e plain tea and h plain tea where it would be having four ports here why four ports because it is having two arms here okay because it is a combination of e plain and h plain so that's why one is called as e arm which is attached upwards okay and one is the h arm which is up, attached downwards like this vertically okay one is upwards and one is vertically so that's why the structure you see here it would be having four ports port 1 port 2 port 3 port 4 it would it would be having three arms now whereas in case of e plain tea and h plain tea it was having two arms now there are two extra arms one is called as e arm that is for e plain tea and h arm that is for h plain tea and one more is the collinear arm which is present between port 1 and 2 okay so this figure you need to be noting it down a magic tea is a combination of e plain tea and h plain tea so let us see some of the characteristics now of magic tea characteristics of magic tea if two waves of equal magnitude and phase are fed into port 1 and 2 the output will be er okay so what does it mean if two waves of equal magnitude so in this case if you consider uh, from the scattering matrix let us consider two any any of any of the two components from the scattering matrix that is S S S one one and S one two. If both of them are having equal magnitudes and phase fed into port one and two, the output would be in the E arm would be equal to zero at port three and H arm at port four. Okay. So this is all about first characteristic. Next is if a wave is fed into port four, it will be divided equally between port one and two. of the collinear arms and will not appear at port 3 okay so this one characteristic you need to be remembering for magic t that is since if it is a four port network it is not that uh, it not it is not necessary that it should be activating in all the four ports okay in this case from this characteristic it is clear that if the wave is fed into port 4 it will be divided equally between port 1 and 2 of the collinear arms and will not appear at port 3 so that's why only three ports would be getting activated once at a time all the four ports are not active so you should be keeping that in mind and moving further in uh, understanding the magic t okay if a wave is fed into port 3 it will produce an output in equal magnitude and out of phase at port 1 and 2 So this is fourth characteristic is very important. The output at port four is always zero. That is, whatever the components of uh, port four, the uh, consider the scattering parameters. That is, S four three is equal to S three four. Why? Because it is a uh, uh, symmetric to each other. So that's why these both are equal, and that would be equal to zero. Okay. So while you write the scattering matrix in that coefficient, you should be remembering that these two values are equal to zero. Okay. If the wave is spread into one of the collinear arm, it will not appear in the other collinear arm at port two or port one because E arm causes the phase delay while H arm causes the phase advance. So that's why from this what you would be getting is if the wave is spread into one of the collinear arm. So in this case, uh, the, there are two collinear arms. One is from port one or port two. Okay, because E arm causes a phase delay while H arm causes a phase advance. So in this case, since it has, it is having two of the extra arm. One is E arm as well as H arm. So that's why uh, it would be uh, easy to say that the scattering coefficients are not stable. So that's why we would be concluding with the statement that S one two equal to S two one would be equal to zero. Okay. If the wave is spread into one of the collinear arms, okay. In the, this is the optional condition. This may not be true in all of the parameters, okay. So these are the characteristics. Please note it down. Now let us get to the scattering matrix. Uh, how to, uh, let us find the values of scattering parameters now. Because of H plane T section, this is one thing you need to be knowing. That is S two three is equal to S one three, and because of E plane T section, S two four is equal to minus S one four. So order of the matrix is four cross four because it is a four port network. It's having four ports. So write the all the four four cross four elements where uh, uh, 
S33 and S44 are equal to 0 because in this case we are considering both ports port 3 and port 4 to be matched okay both the ports are to be matched port 3 and 4 so that's why the diagonal elements S33 and S4, S44 is equal to 0 along with that from the characteristics we have seen that S34 is equal to S43 is equal to 0 so that's why last these four elements are 0 so assuming port 3 and port 4 are perfectly matched so that's why S11 equal to S22 equal to S33 equal to S4 4 4 equal to 0 if we have only port 3 and 4 these two would be equal to 0 okay yeah so based on that write the unitary property condition from unitary property s into s conjugate is equal to u so split it and write it like this matrix here so now do the multiplication part that is first row into first column you would be getting s11 square plus s12 square plus s13 square plus s14 square is equal to 1 name it as equation 1 second row second column s12 square plus s22 square plus s13 square plus s14 square equal to 1 name it as equation 2 third row third column we are getting s13 square plus s13 square equal to 1 fourth row fourth column we are getting s14 square plus s14 square equal to 1 okay so while we multiply first row, first column, second row, second column, third row, third column, fourth row, fourth column, we are getting these four set of equations. From these, if you consider equation 3 and 4, we would be directly getting the values of S13 and S14 as 1 by root 2 because if you simplify this, you see here, if you add these two, it would be 2 times of S13 whole square. So if you bring that 2 to other side, it would be 1 by 2 and if you remove this square, it would be 1 by root 2 for both these equations. So that's why we will be getting the two values, one is for S13 and S14 as 1 by root 2. So till here you please note it down. Now if you compare equation 1 and 2, we would be getting one more conclusion that is the same as which you have got in E plane T as well as H plane T, S11 would be equal to S12. Okay, so using these values. In equation 1, what we get S11 square plus S12 square plus S13 and S14 are 1 by root 2 substitute that and uh, we would be getting uh, 1 by root 2 square plus 1 by root 2 square would be 1. Then uh, if you uh, so simplify this and if you solve this you would be getting S11 is equal to S12 is equal to 0. Why? Because In the fourth characteristics, in the fourth characteristic, we have considered S12 is equal to S21 to be equal to 0, right? So that's why here, if uh, while we solve, we are getting S11 is equal to S12. So since S12 is equal to 0, so automatically it is uh, obvious that S11 also should be equal to 0. Also, S22 should be uh, is equal to 0 because S11 is equal to S22 here since you have already written it, right? So that's why S22 also would be equal to 0. Okay, these things you need to be knowing. Now, port 1 and port 2 are perfectly matched to the junction here because both S11 and S22 are equal to 0. So it is obvious that what we have written the condition here. S11, S22, S33, S44, all the diagonal elements are perfectly matched in case of magic T. So this is one thing you need to be noting down here. Hence, in a four port junction, if any two ports are perfectly matched to the junction, then the remaining two ports are automatically matched to the junction. So that we have proved here just now. In, the, in that case, we, have, we had considered the port 3 and port 4 to be perfectly matched. So while we solved further, we are getting obviously that port 1 and port 2 that is S11 and S22 are also equal to 0 and they are perfectly matched. Okay. Such a junction whose all four ports are perfectly matched to the junction is called as magic T. Okay. So that I already told you when all the four diagonal elements are equal to zero, then it is said to be magic T. Okay. So now scattering matrix of magic T would be looking something like this. Substitute the values and uh, these are the set of values for all the uh, parameters under scattering matrix. Now use the formula B is equal to S into A. So substitute it for b it is b1 b2 b3 b4 s matrix and a1 a2 a3 a4 write it in the form of equations we are we are getting four values b1 is equal to 1 by root 2 a3 plus a4 b2 is 1 by root 2 a3 minus a4 b3 is 1 by root 2 a1 plus a2 and b4 is 1 by root 2 a1 minus a2 okay so case one if you consider a3 equal to zero from these four equations that is a1 equal to a2 equal to a4 not uh, equal to 0. In this case, in case 1 we are considering a3 as not equal to 0. 
So when a3 is not equal to 0, rest all the terms are equal to 0, we would be getting the two values that is b1 equal to a3 by root 2 and b2 equal to a3 by root 2 if you substitute it here, okay. b3 and b4 would be equal to 0. So if you observe carefully, this follows the property of h plane t. In h plane t also we would be getting the same thing when we put a3 not equal to 0. These are the values which we get for b1 and b2. So if we substitute for a3, keeping all other terms are matched, perfectly matched a1, a2, a4, we would be getting the h plane t property. Whereas if you put solve for a4, that is if you put a4 not equal to 0 and all other terms equal to 0, we would be getting b1 is equal to a4 by root 2 and b2 is equal to minus a4 by root 2. b3, b4 are equal to 0. So here if you observe very carefully, it follows the e plane t, okay, where b1 and b2 are one is positive and one is negative. So that's why it follows the property of e plane t. Case 3, I have considered a1 not equal to 0, where I have got these two terms. And for case 4, I have written a2 not equal to 0 and I have got these two terms for b3 and b4. Okay, it is not necessary, but if you write it, it's well and good for magic t. Okay, so other two cases are case 5 and case 6, where uh, I have considered a3 equal to a4 and a1 equal to a2 equal to 0. Okay, I have considered a3 would, should, would be equal to a4. So after solving this, we are getting b1 as 2a3 by root 2 b2, b3, b4 are 0. So it follows the additive property. So this additive property you need to be knowing when uh, b1 is getting activated and when b3 is getting activated in case 6 where I have taken a1 equal to a2 and a3 equal to a4 equal to 0, we would be getting the value only for b3 and it follows the additive property also. Okay. So for additive property, any one of them would be matched, uh, mismatched, rest all the terms would be perfectly matched okay so this is all about additive property and these are the six cases which you need to be knowing under magic t okay so this was all about magic t guys hope you understood uh, the complete magic t so all the parameters are discussed from magic t whatever is needs to be written everything is updated in this notes so this notes i'm going to be circulating in the video's description go and access it it is a handwritten notes which would be very very useful for you guys in the point of examination okay so please do refer it okay so from in this video i have concluded with the, all the waveguide t's in the last uh, three videos i have discussed with e plane t h plane t and magic t okay so these three videos are very important guys do watch these videos till the end and try to understand some of the points okay so that's all for the video guys like this video subscribe to our channel keep supporting thank you